Welcome to the University of Minnesota, electronically. My name is David Blank, and I'm the department head here in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Minnesota. As you know, we decided to move our visitation weekend online out of respect for the health and safety of everyone involved. It's short notice, but I'm proud to say that our students, faculty, and staff have embraced this opportunity and come up with a lot of fantastic online content and the availability of in-person discussions via electronic means, and all of this will give you a chance to really get to know our department much better and answer many of the questions you might have about our program. We're a very large department. We do research in every aspect of chemistry, world-class research in topics that range from human health to a sustainable future. We're also a department that's extremely well known for our efforts in laboratory safety, our efforts in student mental health, our efforts in equity, diversity, and inclusion, and workplace climate in general. And these speak to some of our core values, and I hope you'll hear this echoed throughout your interactions with our students and faculty during this online electronic visit. I know it's a little unusual, but I hope you will also embrace this opportunity to get to know our department better and find out all the things you need to know to make this very important decision for your future. Now I'm going to turn you over to our Director of Graduate Studies, Professor Phil Bullman, to fill in many of the details. Thank you, David. So I'll add only one thing, my pronouns are he, him. So later today, you're going to meet our faculty, you're going to get to know a lot about our facilities, about our research operation, you're going to have that individual contact with the faculty members. But what we're going to try to do in these 25 minutes that are coming right now is really going you know, to give you an impression of why is our department excellent, what more importantly, why is our department unique? So this is a video, we've only put it together over the last three days. So it's not going to be smooth. There are going to be some scenes in the lab where it's a little bit noisy. People are going to stumbling or across their words once in a while. That doesn't really matter to us. Over three days, we've tried to put together a really fired up uh, video to show you why we are proud to be in this department. So let's go ahead. David will give us some introduction to our department. All right, so a little bit more about our department. One of the unique things about our department is that we are actually in the College of Science and Engineering which means chemistry, physics, and mathematics live in the same college as the engineering disciplines, such as chemical engineering. This really fosters collaborations between chemistry and the engineering disciplines and leads to some fantastic science and scientific opportunities. By the numbers, we're a large department. So if you look at our sponsored research uh, spending, we spend over $20 million a year. We've got about 18,000 students that we educate here in the chemistry department every year about 230 graduate students in our program at any time, and about 60 to 80 postdoctoral researchers. We've got 36 staff, 40 faculty members, and we occupy the two buildings you can see behind me. Our collaborative culture has also led to a lot of success when it comes to large federally funded centers. So we have a number of NSF funded centers that are housed here. Their home is the University of Minnesota, such as the Center for Sustainable Polymers, and DOE centers, such as the Inorgano Metallic uh, Catalysis Design Center. And these centers really offer you unique opportunities to work in a collaborative environment, not only within the department, but across departments and with other departments across the country, as well as national laboratories, and develop additional skills when it comes to working beyond your own research group. Now back to Phil. So we're here in the chemistry stock room. That by itself is another really cool fact about our department, but I just want to add one more fact, and that is really about the number of chief editors and associate editors of American Chemical Society journals. We have more ACS editors on our campus than any other campus in the US or worldwide. But enough about bragging about our department. We are a leading department. What I want to focus on in this video is really on why are we unique? And to kind of convince you why you should come to Minnesota. So let us start with diversity. My name is Lee Penn and I'm a professor at the University of Minnesota here in the chemistry department. I use they them pronouns and I'm also the director of undergraduate studies and heavily involved in activities around diversity, inclusion, and equity. One of the really cool things we do is during orientation week, we run training in order to prepare students for their teaching assistant roles. And an important aspect of that is making sure people are ready to work with our diverse students. And so we do a training, for example, on how to be effective allies for students who are studying STEM. In addition to the training opportunities we have in our own department, we also have workshop opportunities through the Office of Equity and Diversity 
For example, we have a certificate program where you can take 10 half day long classes in order to build your competence in areas related to diversity, inclusivity, and equity. Outside of the chemistry department, we also have the Diversity and Inclusivity Alliance, which is an organization in the College of Science and Engineering that is attempting to identify important issues in STEM fields that are related to diversity and inclusivity, but also build our resources related to those things in our college and help people become more competent around these issues by providing training opportunities and more. And in addition, um, advocate for our students, advocate for our faculty, advocate for our staff, advocate for everyone uh, so that we can have a better climate for doing science and engineering. As graduate students, you also have available to you a huge number of student groups where um, an example includes our community of chemistry graduate students, the CCGS, WISE Chemistry Group. Additional student groups you might consider include the Society for the Advancement of Chicanos, Hispanics, and Native Americans um, in Science, or for example, the Multicultural Association of Students in Science. And another is the uh, Black Graduate and Professional Association um, here on campus. So there are many opportunities to get involved with different student groups that share different types of marginalized identities or affinities with one another. Um, and so that's an exciting opportunity for students who come to the University of Minnesota. Another field that we're really excelling in our department is when it comes to stress and mental health. So graduate school is stressful. There are unavoidable stressors. You need a job after grad school. If you go into academia, you do need papers. So some of these stresses are unavoidable, but there are lots of avoidable stresses. And we have, since 2012, tried very hard to eliminate all unnecessary stressors. A big component of that was a survey, really led by our graduate students, but in collaboration with myself and with Point Mental Health Services, which is right behind us. We try to really approach this in a very evidence-based way so that we really change things in our department based on evidence and not just a wild guess. Now this approach is so good that a lot of other departments on our campus have copied us and we've also published about it in the peer-reviewed literature. That has really gotten some attention to Minnesota when it comes to this topic. So we've been invited to different places. At the American Chemical Society meeting, which unfortunately just was canceled because of the coronavirus, I would have been on a panel sponsored by the American Chemical Society president to talk about stress and mental health in grad school. Most patent though, I am about our international students and our domestic students who are all involved in this. One international student, Maral Musavi, was the first author of our first peer-reviewed article on this topic. She went on, had a great science career, uh, time at the University of Harvard in, at the postdoc, and she just saw it in the fall a position as a tenure-track faculty member at the University of Southern California. It's the students that make us great. So let's see, listen more to students. Hi, my name is Claire. And I'm Maya Tzien. And we are the co-presidents of the Community of Chemistry Graduate Students, or CCGS, which focuses on promoting the health and well-being of students in our department. Uh, some of the things that we do um, is most frequently our coffee hour, um, where people can come in and socialize, get some snacks, um, sometime throughout the week. Um, and we also have crafting hours um, to be, find another way to de-stress. In the summer, we have biking and running groups that get people outside and moving around. Um, and then once throughout the semester, we have pause, which is pet away worry and stress. Um, and so they'll bring in puppies and a chicken um, for you to just get to pet for about an hour. Um, and then we also have our annual picnic um, so that everyone from within our department is welcome to come and have something at our barbecue. We also run a mental health survey every two years to gauge the mental health of students in our department as well as their physical health to see if there's anything we can do to improve the culture in our department. Um, and so one of those things has been our annual review. So every year we sit down and fill out a form so that we can kind of gauge where we are sitting and so that our advisors can give us um, feedback on how they feel we are doing and have a conversation about it. Um, and another thing that has come out of it has been our fourth year milestone, um, which after your third year, we have uh, meet with other possible uh, advisors um, or committee members so that you can 
um, kind of gauge and get towards getting to graduation. <laughs> so if you have any questions for us, feel free to contact either one of us or the CCGS email, and we look forward to seeing you in the fall. I'd like to add another shout out to the Community of Chemistry and Graduate Student webpage. There's tons of videos there about how to survive in graduate school, how to really do well, how to find jobs, how to interact with your advisor, etc. There are people from all over the world who watch those videos. Now, this is an example of leadership and student empowerment. These experiences help our graduate students to get jobs in industry and academia. So let us look at another example. Hello, my name is Stacey Bader. I am a third year graduate student at the University of Minnesota. Uh, I, I identify as he, him, and I'm here to tell you about the Joint Safety Team, or the JST. We are a researcher-led organization that is a collaboration between two departments, chemistry and chemical engineering material science. Uh, our goal is to improve the safety culture within the two departments. Um, and we started back in 2012 with the goal of making people feel safer and more comfortable within their labs. And I'm proud to say that we have done a good job of that. Um, today, what we have created have come to be known as the Minnesota model. A number of other institutions are, have either implemented our model or in the process of implementing it. Um, we have a paper out in ACS Journal of, of Chemical Education. We have another one on the way. We collaborate with a bunch of industries, which also fund um, uh, our organization. And we're also well integrated within the departments. And that's because of all the support we've gotten from the departments themselves and department heads. So each lab has a lab safety officer, or an LSO, whose job is to translate safety knowledge into their labs and also participate in walkthroughs where they help draw attention um, to things or safety hazards that people may have missed or not noticed. Um, we also have uh, posters throughout campus, we do a bunch of safety events, trying to make safety fun. Um, we do things like sketches or hands-on demos, and we even had a safety scavenger hunt at one point. Um, and overall, what I'm trying to tell you is, our organization is one of the leaders in the country, and being part of it not only helps you build up your resume, because industries do care about safety significantly, but also it will make you a better researcher because you will be more prepared for accidents and whenever things come at you, you'll always be ready. So we are here in the modern kitchen classroom. Doing great research is one thing. You will see a lot about that today. But if you want to be in a classroom, being a great researcher is not enough. I think you've all had great chemistry teachers and then some teachers who are not really all that good. Let's be realistic. Just because you've got a chemistry PhD doesn't automatically qualify you to be an outstanding teacher. So we take that into account at the University of Minnesota. We have a preparing for future faculty uh, course series that actually in the, typically our students take that in the third or fourth year. In the first semester, you learn a lot about the skills and techniques in the classroom. So for example, uh, what's the attention span of a student? How do I design a whole class? How do I design a syllabus? How do I take diversity in my classroom into account? How do I take into account different learning styles? In the second semester of that course, you're paired with a faculty member and at the beginning of a course, you might teach just a very short period in the class. By the end of the semester, you teach a whole lecture. But the faculty member is going to be there all the time. And so at the end of each lecture, you're going to get feedback on how to improve yourself. Like that, you're going to be much better prepared for a future faculty position. We really teach by example. And, and one thing that also includes is a stress and mental health component. We have annual uh, TA trainings for stress and mental health so that our TAs can recognize stress and mental health among our undergraduate students. Now, that improves our teaching operation, but it also gives you skills that you can use later when you are a faculty on your own or when you're in industry and supervising people who will struggle with similar issues as well. Let us hear more about our teaching operation from Professor Wichendo. Hi, I'm Jane Wessinger, one of four laboratory directors here in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Minnesota. The Department of Chemistry places high value on teaching and it's part of our mission to have excellence in the classroom, both for undergraduate and graduate education. This is evidenced by the fact that 20 of our faculty have earned distinguished teaching awards for their contributions to undergraduate and graduate education. That means when you come here, you'll have excellence in your graduate classes and you'll be part of our teaching mission for undergraduates. Um, that is both engaging and of the highest quality. 
So I'm one of four laboratory directors. I'm the organic laboratory director. We have one for general chemistry, analytical chemistry, and the life sciences. And what we provide is continuity and trainings to support TAs because we want you to feel confident and skilled in the job we expect you to do. And so this means we have weekly TA meetings, we give you feedback, and our goal is to enhance your professional development that you can take to your research as you continue as a graduate student and as you continue on as your um, career develops, whether you go into academics or industry. Um, so we also have programs in uh, training for upper division graduate students or, or older graduate students that involves um, mentorship where you can participate in programs where you work with the a teaching faculty in their classes, be it laboratory or um, lecture classes in active learning classrooms. We use the, the most modern teaching pedagogies uh, that include uh, discovery-based learning and uh, flipped classrooms. So you'll really gain lots of experience and many of our graduate students have gone on to be professors at other universities having these skills. So if you want to learn more, I've made a video that will be on the Slack app that you can go to. And uh, we hope to see you in the fall. I'm here in the Medical Device Center, and we're actually, I personally actually come into this building every two weeks. Uh, I also bring students over here. We meet here faculty members from electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and from uh, the medical school here, as well as people from industry. And we're all working together in one team. Uh, this is part of what we are doing to also prepare our students for an industrial career. So we shouldn't forget the Twin Cities is the second largest economy in the Midwest. We have lots of companies that call this area their home. There's General Mills, there's Cargill, there's Medtronic, there's Boston Scientific, HP Fuller, 3M, Ecolab, Pentair, and then there are many other companies who are, we also collaborate with who are all across uh, the U.S. Students are involved in these collaborations. They are preparing reports sometimes, they're actually coming to the companies and present there so they see how industry works. And so we prepare the students to know more about industry but also how to work with industry. Let us hear from Brian what he has to say. I'm a fourth year graduate student working in the Stein and Bowman labs. My pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, so I work with Medtronic which was founded by the inventors of the pacemaker. Medtronic is uh, leading um, pacemaker company in the world. Um, so while working with Medtronic, um, I've been able to work on a project that really is going to impact people's lives in a very uh, significant way. Uh, and um, the really cool thing about working on this project is that I get to work with people who are, have expertise outside of my own area. Uh, and not only do I get to focus uh, on the fundamental science associated with my part of the project, I also get to see uh, uh, some of the challenges that industry faces uh, when it comes to inventing something new. My top seven lists of reasons why you should come to the University of Minnesota, to our chemistry department. Number one, we have an outstanding preparation for a faculty career as in few other places. Number two, Student empowerment and leadership, we've shown you numerous examples. Students help to shape how our department is moving ahead. Number three, collaborative spirit. That's not only at the department and college and university level, we collaborate beyond the university. Most importantly, we also really collaborate across student, faculty, staff in the department to make things happen together, such as the video today. Number four, we have a really progressive approach towards diversity, and number five, towards mental health. Number six, we have a unique safety approach that is known across the nation. And number seven, we have really strong, interesting connections. A lot of our students are involved in that, as are our faculty members. And that with leading companies that really are leading all over the world with the products, such as, for example, the inventor of the pacemaker. Okay, so what I'm going to do here in the last five minutes that I have here before you're going to talk to a research advisor is just explain you a little bit what are you actually going to do in those typical 5.3 years that it takes to get a PhD in our department. So year number one, you're, most of you are going to take courses and you're going to be teaching assistants. Actually two-thirds of you will already have finished all the courses by the end of the first year. 
Some of you, one, roughly one third, is still going to take one final course in the fall semester of the second year. What's also happening in the second year is preliminary PhD exams. And I do think actually those are really, really good. Like in the written preliminary exam in the fall semester, you're actually making a proposal of what sort of research you are going to do over the next uh, three years. And in my experience, that's really fantastic. It focuses you to make sure that you actually have a plan when you go ahead with your research. The oral exam that is in the fourth semester is kind of a little bit in a similar style, but we do have two different formats. One format is just an independent research proposal. The other format is based on your own research. And then there's some additional questions in regard to your courses. You have plenty of opportunities to talk to your advisor and to fellow students in the group to kind of choose what way is better for you. And then after two years, it's kind of all about research, research, research. This is why we're here in the big NMR center where a lot of our students do actually do take NMR. So research, research, and research in that period, most of you, the vast majority will of our grad students are research assistants. And during that time, we want to make sure that you are staying on track. So there's an annual progress report. The community of chemistry grad students have kind of already told you a little bit about that because science research is so fun, but then once in a while, it doesn't work quite as well as you thought. So we don't want you to kind of walk down with that. We want to make sure that the advisors actually give you feedback and say, well, yeah, no, it's kind of normal, it's research. It's obvious that not all the answers are there and we'll just have to try in different ways. That's what these annual progress reports are about. And then, in the end, there's the final research defense. And we help you with finding jobs in various, many different ways. There's actually the student groups, again, who are helping with kind of finding ways to prepare you. And a lot of the jobs really you also find through contacts of our research faculty. Now, what's the one thing I didn't mention? Advisor selection. So, advisor selection, we actually try to give you as much time as possible. And so, we give you all the time from when you join the department until November 15th, when you can talk to various different research faculty and talk to them about what type of research they're doing. So, you can figure out what is the coolest project. Frankly, that's really hard because there's so many cool projects going on. We also want you to talk to students. Kind of, how is the interaction with the students? We want you to go to group meetings so you can see how the students and the faculty member interact. Uh, we also have a new system this year of a rotation of a student contact. So you will have student contacts from different research groups over that period of, of the first semester. And that will help you to familiarize yourself even more with different research groups. So lots of opportunities. All boils down though, in the early November, you're going to rank list number, uh, choice number one, choice number two, choice number three for your research faculty. And once in a while, one particular faculty member is just super, super popular, and then it's a little bit hard to actually have all the students join that group. But the good news is about 95% of all our students do get their first choice. Now I know this was all really, really super fast, and so I probably should just emphasize that from 11.30 to 1 o'clock today, I'm going to have my Zoom DGS office hours, so please feel free to come there and ask me questions, because now that you're going to meet the research advisors, talk to them about their groups, and talk to them about the research, uh, and kind of save your questions about our program in general, about the structure of our program, for the DGS office hour, or maybe just talk to the students at a later time. So now enjoy your time with our research advisors. And see you in August.